half a cup of water, no warmer than 115 degrees. Add to that two packages of the active dry yeast and stir the packages of yeast into your half a cup of warm water and add approximately two teaspoons of honey. Let this proof for approximately five minutes. Now, into your mixer, one and three quarters cup of warm water, three tablespoons more of honey, and four tablespoons of butter, melted and slightly cooled. Two tablespoons of caraway seeds. Caraway is a member of the fennel family. Oh, and four and a half teaspoons of salt. And now your yeast mixture, which is nice and creamy and just showing signs of life. So mix that up and you start adding your flour, two and a half cups of rye flour first. And four cups of all purpose flour. So I think this dough has been kneaded very nicely. Now you can turn it out as we did the multi-grain bread. Just turn it right out onto a floured surface. You can see how elastic the dough is and how nicely textured it is. And again, turn with a bench scraper. Very nice dough. Mm. And you can make this into a free-form loaf, like rye bread is sold in the stores, or, or you can bake it in a loaf pan. Put it in a buttered bowl and cover it with plastic wrap. Again, to prevent sticking, you can just spray a little bit of vegetable spray on the plastic. Let it rise for approximately an hour to an hour and a half. So the dough has doubled in size. You can again deflate it, get it out of the bowl, divide it in half, and form it into two equal sized loaves. And roll this up, tuck the ends in. This will rise nicely in the pans, and it takes another hour or so to have the dough double in size again. And wash with egg white and water. And sprinkle with a few caraway seeds. If you like a lot of caraway seeds, put a lot on. Cover with your plastic wrap, and in an hour, it'll be ready to go into the oven. The bread is doubled in size. Uncover it and get it right into the oven. The oven's set at 450 degrees. We're going to reduce that temperature immediately to 400. And these loaves should be done in approximately 45 minutes. So here are the two rye loaves, nice and plump. They will make great sandwiches, great toasts, and they're great for just bread and butter. Into your bowl of one cup of rolled oats, add one and a half cups of water, plus two tablespoons. That's been brought to a boil. To this, add a quarter of a cup of molasses. Molasses will be our sweetener in this delicious bread. And let this sit for 10 minutes while you get the rest of the recipe going. Just stir that around and we have one already cooled and we're gonna use that for a swap out. So now this is warm but not hot. 
and you can add one envelope of active dry yeast over the porridge. Let it proof, and that is your leavener. Now in the food processor, grind a half a cup of rolled oats. Oat flour is ground from whole grain rolled oats, and it has a pleasant chewiness with a mild, milky flavor that works well in muffins, cookies, pancakes, scones, sandwich breads like this one, and also in biscuits. It's actually the easiest flour to mill at home. Simply pulse the oats in a food processor like I'm doing until ground fine. And you can sift or you can just use it right out of the food processor as I am because this is a coarse bread anyway. So there you can see they're quite finely ground up here. And so right into the food processor you can sift all the other dry ingredients together. Three quarters of a teaspoon of salt one and a half cups of bread flour. Bread flour is a type of flour used in recipes that require a good quality gluten formation. Also, a quarter of a cup of powdered milk. This is the same milk that you will reconstitute with water if you don't have access to fresh milk. One and a half cups of whole wheat flour also. So all these dry ingredients can just be pulsed together, which is same thing that sifting does. There. And then you can just put all the dry ingredients right in the bowl. And stir this up. So here's our dough all mixed together. You can put a little bench flour on your counter and just turn this out into a pile on your board or your counter or your marble. We're going to put the bread right back in this bowl to rise. It doesn't need a lot of kneading. It really needs to be just thoroughly mixed and try to really compress the moisture into the flour so that it's all absorbed. If it's a little too dry, you can sprinkle with a little bit more water. Now you can, with a clear oil, like a safflower oil, just brush your bowl. Very little oil necessary. And put your dough right in the bowl. Cover tightly with plastic wrap and let rise in a warm spot until doubled in bulk. It's gonna take approximately an hour. Now here's our dough, nicely risen. So flatten this and Pull in the edges, really pinch it tight, and ultimately you want kind of a nine inch domed bread. That's after it rises again. But see how nice this looks? And get that right on an oiled baking sheet and cover again for a second rising. In an hour, this will be ready to prepare for the oven. So here's our nice boule that's doubled in bulk. Preheat your oven to 400 degrees and make sure it's preheated before you put your bread in the oven. We're going to score the bread after we brush it with softly beaten egg white. So all over with the egg white and then sprinkle oh, a tablespoon or so of rolled oats all over the outside. And then with a very, very sharp knife, cut an X right into the top. Try not to deflate your bread. This X will look beautiful once the loaf is baked. Pop this right into the 400 degree oven. And you might ask, why are you scoring the bread? Well, it's scored intentionally to create a weak spot on the surface of the loaf to prevent the loaf from bursting at the weak spots. So it's nice to do an X in a round loaf like this. You could take a sharp razor and go in a spiral if you like. You can do just straight marks across the top. Every baker has his or her marks that they like to impose on their baked goods. I like to do the X. So get this right into your hot oven, 400 degrees for 10 minutes. Reduce the temperature to 350 until the bottom sounds hollow when tapped. 40 to 45 minutes longer, and then we'll see. So here is our bread. 
it has been sitting on a rack. When it comes out of the oven, make sure you cool it. Now for sandwiches, you can cut big crosswise slices. Look at the great texture. That's for me. And I think I'll make open-faced egg salad tomato sandwiches. Generous amount of mayonnaise. Tomato, of course. A nice dollop of egg salad. And you can top with a nice little piece of lettuce. I guarantee that this is a bread recipe you'll turn to again and again. I love cheddar cheese. Me too. Actually, like sometimes when I get home, I eat a piece of cheddar cheese. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent thing I to know. eat. I know. It's so good. I, I would say I do that three days a week. <laughs> and I like I like the really Oops. dry cheddar, strong, mm -hmm. white or yellow. They're making great, great cheeses in Wisconsin now, they actually. Are. They are. Two eggs. I'm supposed to break in here, right? Two eggs, okay. a cup of buttermilk, and four tablespoons of butter. You can whisk those together. Melted. Melted and cooled. This is seven ounces of cheddar that's going to get mixed into the bread. So it's a quick bread. You, yep. you No yeast. No yeast, no machines. Just mix everything together by so hand. No reason not to have good bread at home for a Completely. snack. Completely. Now, what do you eat on cheese bread? Cheese? I Well, you can eat cheese, but I like like a marmalade or a, a really high quality jam is really nice because I like cheese and jam together. Oh, you do? Yeah. Do you uh -oh. not do that? No, not um, usually. Um, I mean, I mean I, my friends always put out, you know, fig jam with their yeah. French cheeses, but I usually leave the jam and eat the cheese. Okay, so leave the jam, eat the cheese, so then just toast the bread and eat it on its own. Yes. This is two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, and then to that add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder and a half teaspoon of baking soda because we're using buttermilk, so it's acidic, so we want to use baking soda as well. A teaspoon and of a loaf pan that is buttered and floured. And the oven is at 350 50, degrees. Right. There's a teaspoon of salt, and then to this mixture, I'm adding almost all, not completely all, about okay. six ounces of the grated cheddar. Sharp cheddar is the best, and okay. then one ounce goes on top. And I should pour this over that? Yep. Just mix it in. Okay. Here's a scraper for you. We have one. Okay, good. There. That's it. That's all there is to it. It's like any quick bread. This one's savory, which is kind of nice. When I went to Ireland, we had tons of quick breads because they all make that delicious brown bread. Oh, yeah. Oh, Ugh. so good. Here, it's getting why a little... don't you use the spatula? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. All right. That just gets mixed in there and then transferred to that buttered and floured pan. It's a little stiff. It's different than some batters, so you might want to just sort of like pat it in there. I will. And then... Smooth the top and good to go. Mm -hmm. So it's a rough, quick bread. Yeah, but it comes out really nicely. It domes a little bit on top. It gets a little golden from, well, from the cheese. So I might, I might even take a piece of this home so yeah. that I can have my cheddar with something. Your cheese bread with cheese? Right. I'm all for that. Okay, there. There you go. Sprinkle. And then it takes about 50 to 55 minutes to bake. 350. A cake tester inserted in the center should come out clean. So Wisconsin cheese bread actually is really, really pretty. That's lovely. Can I have an interior slice, Absolutely. Please? No end. No, I don't want an end. Nice, yeah. tender interior. Oh, so pretty. It's moist. So it's moist, yeah. Yeah. Look how nicely it slices. Yeah. It'll slice really well. There great. you go. Oh, lovely. The thinnest With slice ever. Soft. Irish butter, please. Mm -hmm. This bread isn't just for your favorite cheese heads. Mm. It's for everyone. It's for everyone. Thank you very much for showing thank us you. this. And thank you all for watching. See you next time on Martha Bakes. Mm. Six cups of flour in your mixing bowl. Nice level cups. Not an all-purpose flour for this, but we're using bread flour. Bread flour is best for bread, pretzels, anything chewy and requiring plenty of structure. So to the six cups of flour, add one tablespoon of coarse salt. This is kosher salt. And you can whisk that together. One and three quarters cup of lukewarm water. One package of active dry yeast. Let this proof 
in the warm water, and the water should be no hotter than 110 degrees. Be careful about that. Stir that up a little bit. And the idea of proofing is really to test that the yeast is alive, and one tablespoon of the best honey. This is from my bees. Very nice flower honey. Let that just proof. You want to see a few bubbles emerging on the surface of the water. This can be put right here on the machine and lock the machine into the water. It looks, it looks nice and frothy. Add two large eggs. I'm going to break them into the bowl first, mix them up a little bit. So it's a little bit eggy, the dough. And pour this into the flour. And the dough hook will do a very nice job of saving you a lot of effort. And now, when the dough comes away from the bowl like it's doing, add the butter, four tablespoons, a tablespoon at a time. Unsalted, room temperature butter. And you see how it just gets incorporated right into the dough. It gets sticky and then it gets very nice and smooth. So it's been kneading for about four minutes. It looks very good. It's come away from the bowl. It's all on the dough hook. Release this from the machine and put the dough into a well-buttered bowl to rise until doubled in bulk. And that'll take just about one hour. And look how beautiful the dough is. It is developing its texture, rising like this till doubled in bulk. Put it on a floured board. <gasps> so nice. It is a beautiful texture. It does not stick to the buttered bowl. And you can just fold it into thirds and then fold it into thirds. Again, a letter fold it's called, just like that. And put this Fold side down right back into the bowl, cover again, and let rise for the second time. And that's one more hour. So here is our dough risen for the second time. And divide the dough into 12 equal pieces. Now you might ask, how does one do that? Well, if you make a rectangle of approximately the same thickness, 12 pieces, you can cut this down the middle. And each of these pieces can be cut into six pieces. Always start in the middle. So this is the middle and into thirds. And in one way you can actually test your dividing skills is to use a scale and that scale will tell you if your pieces are exactly the same. There. Now the next thing, form our Kaiser rolls. Fold it and roll it. Form a knot like this. So that goes like that. And then this one goes under and through. This one goes over. And that's the first Kaiser roll. And keep working quickly so your dough doesn't dry out. Tie it in a knot. It's a lot of fun to work with dough like this. This one goes under and through. There, that is a perfect Kaiser roll. And these are now ready to rise covered again in a warm, cozy place. So now, brush very lightly with a beaten egg, just like that. Don't deflate, don't press down hard, and use a very soft, natural brush for this. These can be made ahead of time. You can freeze them, warm them when you're having a big breakfast party. So there, that's ready to go. Some poppy seeds. Poppy seeds tend to have a life of their own. They dance. So just sprinkle all over the roll as much as you like. 
have your oven preheated to 350 degrees. And this is gonna take anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes. Rotate halfway through. When these are cooled completely, and cool them on a rack right out of the oven, eat it the way you want to eat it. I really do love these rolls. Slathered, oh, look at the great texture inside. Slathered with delicious butter. A nice cup of tea with lemon. That's one way. The other way, with poached eggs, bacon, it's great, whichever way you prefer. Golden brown and delicious, these homemade Kaiser rolls, I don't think can be beat. And the first step is proof the yeast. We need two packages of active dry yeast. Because this is a heavy bread and it has a lot of grains in it, you need two packages of yeast. Generally, um, two loaves of bread really require one package of yeast. In a half a cup of warm water, no hotter than 115 degrees. And for the food, instead of using sugar, we're using two teaspoons of honey. This is my flower honey, which I adore, right from my beehives. We had a bumper crop last year. I hope this year is as good. Let this just proof. You can whisk it up a little bit with a wire whisk. Okay, so assemble the rest of the ingredients. So measure out your flour into a big bowl. One cup of rye flour, two and three quarters cup whole wheat flour. The rye flour, you might have a little bit of a challenge finding it. You can get it online very easily, but uh, you can also find it in baking supply stores and in gourmet markets. We have so many of those markets in New York, we kind of take it for granted that everybody can find such things. But uh, I'm sure you'll find it if you look for it. So that's two and three quarters cups of whole wheat flour and two and a half cups of all-purpose flour. with two tablespoons of kosher salt. And you can just whisk this all together. So there, we have our dry ingredients, we have our grains, we have melted butter, four tablespoons of melted butter, and the yeast, which is ready to put straight into the bowl. Bread making is a good habit. And I think once people determine that it's fun and that it is healthy, I think uh, that's when they get hooked on making bread. So three tablespoons of honey. One and three quarters cup plus two tablespoons of warm water. Oh, and don't forget the butter, four tablespoons of melted butter. And you can add several cups of the flour mixture. And we're using a dough hook from the start. As it mixes, add a little bit more of the dry. You can up the speed a little bit. So now finish off your dry. And now you can add the grains. Add one and a third cups of cooked wheat berries. Add the one cup of soaked bulgur. All you do is soak the bulgur wheat in water. Half a cup of flax seed. Oh, and a half a cup of rolled oats. And a third of a cup of sunflower seeds. I know my wild birds would love this bread. Because this is a dense dough, you will want to knead it until it's really coming away from the sides of the bowl. Okay, so this is very well mixed, but you can see that it is still very, very sticky. I'm gonna turn it out now and knead it for about, oh, three or four minutes to incorporate just maybe a little bit more flour. So here, get this turned out. Have a bench scraper ready. Mm, 
Doesn't that look healthy just by just looking at it and smelling it? It's uh, a healthy loaf. A little bit of flour on it. Now when starting to knead bread, use a bench scraper in one hand, just in case you need your hand for something, because your other hand might get very sticky. And to have two hands sticky, use the heel of your hand and push the dough away from you. The bowl is buttered. It will take this dough and the dough will rise until it's about doubled in size. That takes about an hour for this dough. So there, I think that is well kneaded. The dough looks good. Plunk it down in the bowl, cover it with plastic wrap, spray the top with a little bit of vegetable spray. And let it rise about an hour to an hour and a half. Now it's only for this show that magic happens. The dough has doubled in size. And you again deflate it. Processes are pretty similar. And cut this in half. You can get that out of the bowl. Cut it as evenly as you can. You can weigh it if you want to make sure that the loaves are perfect. Most bakeries would weigh it. And again, flatten it out into a rectangle and Roll it and fold it, turning in the ends and sealing this bottom seam. And there. It's very nice. Put it right into the pan. Work quickly. This is not a difficult thing to do and you should not be afraid of your dough. Roll it up, turn in the ends. The fun part is making the loaves. Oh, and the dough feels great. It's heavy, but it's laden with good grains. Now, we brush the tops with one egg white mixed with a little bit of water. No yolk, just the egg white. And this will help the decorative grains that are going to be on the outside of the loaf adhere. And then just a tablespoon of flax sprinkled lightly. These are so shiny and pretty. Some of the oats. And sunflower seeds. And there. Ready to rise again before they go into the oven to rise even further and form those beautiful multi-grain loaves. About an hour until they double in bulk. So here are the loaves doubled in size and they go right into a 450 degree oven. Mm. They look so good. Now immediately reduce the temperature and let them bake at 400 degrees for 45 minutes. So the loaves are out of the oven you can extricate them from the pans. They've cooled a little bit, so I can handle them. But they're well done, really well done. There they are. What beautiful, beautiful breads. Let them cool thoroughly before you try to cut them. And they will stay for three or four days perfectly good for sandwiches, toast, and for just bread and butter. My guest today is Uri Sheft from Bread's Bakery. Uri, you're going to share a very delicious version of babka. How do we make it? We need two large eggs. Okay, I can do that for you. Yeah, and I'll meantime take the flour. This is so we're measuring. This is all measuring. done by measuring, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, what, 650 Six. grams of flour. Right. So what I like to do before we start, I like to sift the flour, because that's the way we're going to get another 10 to 15% more. Okay. Okay. So I start with the milk, inside the bowl, then the fresh yeast. Ah, so three quarters of a cup of milk, milk one ounce. One ounce of uh, fresh, yeast. fresh yeast. Take the flour. Take the flour. Okay. So easy to just lift it up in the paper. The whole thing? The whole thing. Eggs. 
half a cup and one tablespoon of granulated sugar and a <clears throat> teaspoon of salt. The butter? So okay. room temperature, very soft. Very soft, yes. So one stick plus two tablespoons of very soft butter, mm. unsalted, and vanilla. Don't forget the vanilla. No. <laughs> Which is like, what, a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon? Yeah. Oh, just a hardly bit. any. Yeah. Oh, okay. Then we're going to start to mix it in a very slow speed so we don't have the flour all over us. So easy, just everything easy. together. Everything huh? together. Very nice. Now, one thing, when I started, though, I never do anything else. I don't go now answering the phone. Don't let anybody <laughs> disturb me. Like, you sound like me. I always say, do not go and answer the door. Nothing. That's I right. I want to get very intimate with my dough. OK. Uh, and what do you think? It's been assembled yeah. very nice together. After all the ingredients are assembled together, you can go a little bit higher on the speed. If we look at the dough, slowly, slowly, we see everything is assembled, get shiny. The mixer is going to have a little bit harder time because the dough is going to get a little bit more uh, elastic. I see. I think now the dough is almost ready. Yeah, it's fantastic. Very easy dough. Very easy dough. Actually, even no need to even a tool to take it out. Right. Do you want a little flour? So, yeah. Just a little. Yeah, this is nice. And now I'm going to knead it with my hand. So I have. This is what I call my mom's way, just working with my hand plum, squeezing it to the table. Right. So now I like because after we're going to roll it out, and I, I want a rectangular, so I kind of like to give it oh, I see. a shape that will be easy to roll it out later. So we're going to come a little bit of flour here. Good, and it has to rise for how long? Now so it's rise for one hour in room temperature and then another hour in a refrigerator. Oh. But we can also stretch it out the refrigerator time even up to eight hours. So we can actually make the dough the Last day night. before yeah. uh, in the evening and then in the morning finish it up. So I'm just making the cinnamon sugar with half a cup of sugar mixed with a teaspoon of Cinnamon. Right. Ori is going to now roll the dough. Just sprinkle a little bit of flour. I'll take all the gas out. So I really want to get it rectangular, so I kind of the edge before I start to work with a rolling pin. Then start to roll it out. Boy, it's beautiful dough. Let's so roll it out to approximately 10 inches by 28 inches for this yeah. particular babka. Now this makes how many babkas? This makes three babkas. Oh wow. Okay. Now. We're gonna Once. smirch the butter. Okay, so, so I like to use this um, scraper. So again, the butter really has to be very uh, room temperature to yeah. spread yeah. like this. Now we can spread this all over. So these are currants, mm -hmm. so tasty. And okay. walnut. So one and a half cups of walnuts. Walnut. Yeah, very can... nice. Okay. Now, in order to make sure everything stays, we can just a little bit help it. So neat. This is very nice. I want to roll it, but I want to roll it very tight. So a little bit patient, because it's going to roll in, and then going to go a little bit back. And then you can help me roll it. But I'm just going a little piece at a time. Gets easier and, as you go. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. And now, I'm going to cut the small one, and then I'm going to cut the oh, in see. half. Ah. So the idea is crisscross them, and then we twist them. Oh, pretty. Oh, yeah. and the openness is so beautiful. And the opening is going to be. So twisted. OK, I'm going to do this one. OK, so you want to have the same side. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Mm, beautiful. Yeah. And then in the mold. Now these, Ori tells me, you might find things like this online. <laughs> or you can use a tin. Now we're going to let it sit and proof for about one hour. So you want to see what happened? 
<laughs> They're so beautiful. Yeah. So these go in a what, 350 oven? 350 oven. A it's... convection oven, because those it helps them rise even more, right? Right. And for how long? Just for half an hour, maybe sometimes it's need to be turned in okay. the middle of the baking, maybe another so five minutes, 30, 35 minutes. And while they're baking, um, make a sugar syrup, which is like a glaze for the finished babka. So the sugar syrup is two thirds of a cup of water. And half a cup of sugar. Okay. Very easy. Very and so that's easy. just gonna be like a shiny glaze on top. Right, after the babka coming out of the oven, gonna really make it moisture. So the sugar's all dissolved, and while it's hot, you brush it. Brush it, yeah. Okay. So give it a good layer of sugar syrup. It's so pretty. And it does soak in, doesn't it? It is, yeah. And that's why we do it when it's hot. What a fantastic gift mm -hmm. for people to make. It is. Wow, and wow. it's swirled just perfectly. Cake and nuts and currants. So thank you very much, Uri, for sharing this delectable babka recipe. I cannot wait to try it on my friends. So uh, to one and a third cups of whole milk, add one third of a cup of apple cider vinegar. If you watch closely, the milk starts to bubble immediately and starts to curdle, to acidify. And into a big bowl, three cups of all-purpose flour. I generally use Hecker's flour for pretty much all my baking needs. A teaspoon of baking powder. Make sure that it's fresh, it hasn't expired, you haven't had it hanging around in your cupboard for a year. One teaspoon of baking soda, two and a half teaspoons of salt, and I'm using kosher salt. Very important to have enough salt in this bread. And you can whisk this together. Now you can add another essential ingredient to this, and it's called coarse bran. This is the outer coating of the wheat. It comprises about 14% of the wheat by weight, um, and it is where a lot of the nutrition in the wheat berry is. And it adds a very nice flavor to the Irish soda bread. So we're making it healthier and better for you. So here's our dry ingredients, into which we cut butter. Now, I find that the cutting in of the butter is accomplished much more easily when you have the butter cut into little quarter inch cubes like this. It's actually four tablespoons of butter. This is just sliced from um, a stick of butter. And if it's cold enough, this is very easily accomplished. Then you just stack it like this, make sure the butter's cold, and then cut crosswise. And you have all the little cubes of butter that you need. You can do this all ahead of time and keep the butter in the refrigerator until you're ready to form uh, whatever you're making. But when I make pot brise or pot sucre, I always cut the butter up like that. And here it is, four tablespoons of butter and just quarter inch pieces. Now this, I'll just put right back in the fridge and I'll have it for the next loaf of Irish soda bread. It creams easily, it's very easy. So now cut with your old fashioned pastry cutter, and uh, I love these, and just cut your butter into the dry ingredients. This is a very easy one bowl bread. You want it to look like coarse meal, like you always say in the recipes, coarse meal. Let's see how the milk is doing. Oh my gosh, it is already curdled. It's like magic, it really works. And it's flavorful and fragrant. Now we're gonna to add to this our raisins. One cup of dark raisins for this recipe, but you can use golden raisins. Make sure I kind of pack in the raisins. I love raisins in this bread. So add your raisins and you can do this by hand. And very important to have lots of caraway seeds. This is the essential ingredient for rye bread. It's an anise flavored seed. One quarter cup we're going to add. Gives a crunchiness and uh, an extraordinary flavor to the soda bread. And then 
We're gonna stir in the buttermilk. Your homemade buttermilk. And that's it, really easy. Stir it in, moisten every particle of flour, but don't overwork. And I must tell you, the apple cider is very, very fragrant. And now on a lightly floured surface, form your ball of bread. Flour on the crust does not hurt. In fact, oftentimes if you buy soda bread, you'll see it's very white and floury. Use a bench scraper, give it just one or two light kneads, and put this right on parchment lined baking sheet. You can dust it with a little bit more flour on the top. Cut a big X in the surface of the bread and pop this into your 350 degree preheated oven and set your timer for an hour and a quarter. And now I think our Irish soda bread is done. It certainly looks done. Let it cool on a rack, and you can cut it while it's still slightly warm and serve it with Irish butter, or wait till it completely cools and give it to your friends. This is Irish soda bread. first thing you're going to do is get 14 ounces of seedless red grapes. Wash them, take the stems off, and coat them with about a tablespoon of your best olive oil. And just let them sit aside until you're ready to add them to the dough. Now the dough itself. Two and a quarter cups of warm water, no hotter than 115 degrees. And this is the water that you are going to Add the yeast to three quarters of a teaspoon of active dry yeast. And notice I have fitted the machine with the flat beater. This is going to be a wet, sticky dough, and we're only incorporating the flour right now. We're not really kneading it. So four and three quarters cups. One, two, I'll start with three. Add the fourth. And three quarters. And once all the flour is incorporated into the liquid, you're going to add half a cup plus a couple tablespoons of raisins. This adds a really good flavor to the focaccia. And then the same amount of dark raisins. And beat that up. Looks perfect. So now, remove the bowl from the mixer, and you're going to allow this dough to rise in the bowl. Scrape down the beater and the bowl, and cover with plastic wrap until doubled in bulk. So here you have the dough. It's doubled in bulk. Put the bowl back on the mixer. Add your salt. One tablespoon plus one and a half teaspoons. And a dough hook. Let this knead until the salt is completely incorporated, and I'll show you the next step. Okay, this is well kneaded. Look at all those great raisins. Remove it from the bowl onto a floured work surface. You want this dough very sticky, so don't incorporate a lot of flour in it. And you're going to put this into the bowl with a folded side down. Cover that with plastic wrap and let rise until doubled in size. And we have a swap out of that, which I will show you now. Look how beautiful this looks. And these risings are important if you want a really well-textured focaccia. This one requires four See, it's less sticky, but it's still moist. So just flatten this out. Fold over a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. Put it back in the bowl. There. Mm. Now let that rise until doubled in bulk. And we have one already done. And we have our dough that has risen the third time right here. 
and you're going to turn this right out into a baking sheet with a third of a cup of olive oil. The oil can be all over the dough. Spread the dough into the entire pan. You want air pockets in this dough, you just want to flatten it out. It's looking very good. You want all the nooks and crannies, you want the bubbles. Cover it with plastic wrap and let it rise until about doubled. We have one that has already risen. Wow, look how great it looks. Remember the grapes that we soaked in olive oil? Now's the time to just push the grapes into the surface of this dough. Wait till you see what happens, they're so beautiful. Pour the grape juice and the rest of that olive oil right on top. Two or three tablespoons of sanding sugar. This is that sparkly sugar which will caramelize the top. And some rosemary, just for flavor. I have my rosemary plant right from the greenhouse. About two tablespoons, all over the top. Get this right into a 450 degree oven for 30 to 40 minutes, right on the pizza stone. And I think our focaccia is all ready to come out of the oven. Oh yes, it is spectacular. Now to serve your focaccia, I would cut it into squares and serve it with coarse sea salt and a very good cheese. How beautiful. So in a bowl, there are two cups of bread flour. To that, add three cups of all-purpose whole wheat flour, half a cup of oats, and we're using rapid rise yeast, also known as instant dry yeast. So you can see it's very fine. It doesn't need to be dissolved in water like the regular active dry yeast. So just sprinkle that right into your mix and two tablespoons of sesame seeds, seeds of the sesame plant native to Africa and India, two tablespoons of flax seeds, two tablespoons of poppy seeds, and four tablespoons of husked or shelled pumpkin seeds. So all of these can be stirred together. Oh, and don't forget the salt. Very important for this to have salt. Two tablespoons of coarse salt. I like to use kosher salt. And now dissolve a quarter of a cup of granulated sugar in two and a half cups of cold water. And pour that right into the dry ingredients and stir well. This is like one of the easiest recipes and it's also very nice to serve at a dinner party. And the same bowl is going to be used for letting the bread rise. Very good. Now brush the top of the dough with a little bit of olive oil and cover with plastic wrap. And let it rise at room temperature until it's doubled in bulk. That's going to take from 12 to 18 hours. We have one that's already risen. See how the plastic is full of gas? Just pull that off and that's the gas that comes from the yeast. Scrape this down. Mm, so fragrant. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of flour on my surface here, and I'm really resisting the urge to knead. You don't have to knead this bread. That's the beauty of it. So use your bench scraper, and just form this into a ball. Very nice. So pretty. Now. Here's your Dutch oven. Brush the bottom and the sides with olive oil. A Dutch oven simulates a baker's oven in that it creates the steam necessary to achieve that nice crispy crust. There, that's, that's good. And a little bit of flour in the bottom. And get your dough right there. And then sprinkle the top of your dough with a little bit of flour. The flour helps the bread get a wonderful dark crust. But now, one more step, one large egg white. That's going to help all these other seeds adhere to the crust. 
and just brush the top of the bread with the egg wash. And now sprinkle a tablespoon of flax seeds over the surface. Shiny and beautiful and nutritious. And a tablespoon of pumpkin seeds. The same seeds that you put into the dough are now being sprinkled over the top. Poppy seeds, black poppy seeds really darken the top of this loaf. And a tablespoon of sesame seeds. Now you can use white sesame seeds or you could use black sesame seeds, which would give an even darker appearance to our beautiful bread. And now into the top of this beautiful bread, we're going to score an X. Scoring is not just to make a visually pretty design on the top of the loaf, it's also how the baker controls the direction in which the loaf expands. There, that should do it. Very beautiful. So now cover your loaf and let this bread rise until it has expanded, doubled in bulk. Now this has been rising for almost two hours and just sprinkle a little bit of water on the top. This will help create an even crispier crust. Cover and get right into a 475 degree preheated oven. Reduce the heat to 450 degrees, bake for about 45 minutes, uncover and bake 15 minutes longer until it has a beautiful dark brown surface. Look how gorgeous. Cool it in the pot, slice it in half first. Look at the nice texture inside and then just slice it this way. Mm, look how beautiful. I can't wait, I have to try it. Some nice unsalted butter and some homemade apricot jam. That's a whole California apricot. And mm, healthy, very tasty and homemade. Isn't it amazing that baking bread in a pot could yield such incredible results? This is a recipe you have to try. I start with a sourdough starter, and if you don't have one at home, you can make one, you, know, you can either make one or improvise by using yeast, but the starter that we use here at Balthazar is one which I grew quite a few years ago. How many years ago? Mm, five or ten. Is it the same starter that you use in the breads, too? Uh-huh, yeah. So and we just keep feeding it, and we always have a little bit left, left over. You so know, we're going to make a big overnight. batch today. So is this, like, room temperature? This, I, I actually feed starters here quite warm because I find that the yeast grows quickly. I've added three pounds and two ounces of water, and I'm going to add two, about two and a half of flour. Everything that Paula is going to use today is in pounds. Three pounds of water is about three pints of water because right. a pint is a pound. Right. The world the around. around. <laughs> so how much flour? Two and a half. Now, what kind of flour? I know the ingredients using, are very important yeah. in your breads. So I use unbleached flour. Organic would be nice. It doesn't take much, just a couple of grains of yeast, because you're going to leave this to sit for about 24 hours in a warm area to let it grow. So that little bit. It should get going by tomorrow, yeah, I would say. So then I just put it into a plastic container. Let it. And just leave it at room temperature? Yeah, or a warm place, you know. Okay. Do you have one to show us that's... I have the one yeah. that we have, yeah. It, mm, it smells so good. Yeah, it has a nice sort of almost fruity smell it or does. something. And it shouldn't have an alcoholic smell. It shouldn't t smell like bad beer or something. Shall we start? Yes, indeed. Okay. So how much flour? 9.7 pounds. That's okay. what I and it's all pre-measured, OK. Yeah. OK. And how much of that? The starter, I've got almost five and a half pounds. The yeast that I use is instant yeast. How much so yeast? Almost two ounces. So how much is cocoa? That's a lot of cocoa. The cocoa is about nine-tenths of a pound. And the sugar. Now, this sugar is what kind? It's unbleached, sort of unprocessed, lumpy sugar. I have two and a half pounds of sugar and water. And the water is almost six pounds. And it makes a bit of a wet dough, which I like. So this I is like. quite heavy now. 
that's like it's almost 20 pounds or yeah, something. Yeah, it's 25 pounds. Now, don't be afraid if you don't have one of those at home. Not many of us do. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to start it slowly to get this the ingredients This will make how many combined. loaves? If they're one pound loaves, it'll make 27 loaves. Oh, but the recipe a... that we have on the web will reflect Yeah, it'll a, have uh, an amount that you need. Yeah, so we can know. make two. And how much salt? Three and a half ounces, or 3.6 actually. So I'm going to add the salt and I'm going to leave the mixer off for about 15 minutes while we chop the chocolate and let the dough absorb the water that I've added. So we're going to put two and a half pounds of chocolate into this recipe. I like that you get irregular chunks and at the end it sort of melts into the oh, dough, which I, I like. So That's it doesn't just I taste like. like a cocoa bread. You no, know? it doesn't at all. I like that. It's not complicated it's like a, a really brioche. Easy recipe. Oh, it's, no, it's wonderful. Just, it's, if you wish, could you use chocolate chips? Sure you could, yeah. yeah. This is the Valrona. Do you mm -hmm. use this exclusively here? Or? Yeah, we do. And this is bittersweet or yeah. semi-sweet chocolate. Not it's a bittersweet. It's yeah, called Manjari. Okay. And it's Manjari. So now that's rested for about 20 minutes. Yeah, now I'm just going to turn it on, add the butter, and finish mixing it. Okay. So this is our butter. How yeah. much is that? Looks that's about a half a pound. Half a pound. pound. Okay. And that should be room temperature. It should be a similar consistency, actually, as the dough. So okay. this might take about 15 or 20 minutes to mix. Okay. Should we butter the pans while oh, we're yes, waiting? Let's get that okay. done. I coat them with the plain sugar oh, over the, the other sugar. side. Okay. Yeah. I'll do that. Okay. And just scoop it up and cut, make sure the sides are covered. Once the dough begins to slap around inside the bowl, you know, it's getting toward there. This is looking good. almost done, oh, and I put the chocolate in just, you know, toward the end of the mix so that it doesn't tear up the dough, which okay. it has a tendency to do. So we're going to add that now? Just add the whole thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to speed this up and rub it into the dough a bit. All right. The dough is beginning to be done. Now it really pulls to mm -hmm. almost paper thinness. It's really cleaned up off the side of the bowl, and I'm going to leave it like that. It's got a nice sheen to it. At this point, I just put it into an oiled container. I let it rise until it's doubled. At room temperature, that takes, I don't know, anywhere from two to three hours. We have one already risen in a tub here. We had made it earlier and put it into the refrigerator after it had risen. So I'm going to invert it, and I guess we'll need to scale it up. Oops. Okay. Now, how much do we want to set this for? We happen to scale them into four ounce rolls. So I can do that, Paula, while you okay. form the loaves, if you trust me. <laughs> Absolutely. Do they feel okay? Yeah, they feel great. If you're just kind of twisting it, um, yeah. and then just use the friction of your hand on the base okay. only. I'm getting it. I got it with my right hand. <laughs> now I have to get it with both hands. This will stick a bit to your hands. There's no getting around it. Oh, I see. You're tucking it under while you're rolling. So I'll finish these up, and why don't you show okay. us putting it in the pan? And then we have to let these rise. Yeah. So we're putting about five in these pans. Mm. Okay. Those are the big pans. Yeah. And I'll put four in the smaller ones. And... Now look how beautiful and puffy they've doubled in size. Yeah. Do you want to brush them with egg, and okay. I'll sugar them? OK, great. What kind of egg? It's just egg yolk and cream, probably 50-50. So turbinado sugar on top. If you like, you know, you can also do without it. It's just a matter of personal taste. So now these are going into the convection oven, which is set at what temperature? I started at about 350 and turn it down to 325. But um, at home, you might want to go 25 or 50 degrees hotter without a convection. And Paula has the finished product right here. These have been cooled. So we should let them cool in the pan. Right? I let them cool a bit because they're kind of soft, sort of like brioche. Normally not this much, and they stick a bit. But be careful if you take them out hot because the sugar will really burn and stick to your hands. So can so I try? Go. Absolutely. And here is your chocolate bread with a glistening top, delicious inside. Mm. Perfect. Too dry. 
and that's the sure smile of a very fine baker. If you don't want to get yourself all covered with chocolate in your own kitchen, just wander down to Spring Street in Soho and sample the real thing for yourself. Thank you, Paula. Okay, thanks. It's been a pleasure. <laughs>